Hello! Welcome to Sunburn Encounters, encountering the Father through the face of the sun. My name's Bo, and I have a short word for you today. If you're anything like me, and the thought of revival or global revival stirs up your spirit and draws out a hunger in you that, that will just drive you nuts, then I want to tell you, keep your eyes on Jerusalem. Keep your eyes on the Jewish people. I hope to tell you all about Romans 11, um, how God has not forgotten, He has not forsaken the Jewish people, but actually the greatest move of God is going to come through those people. But it's also the very reason that um, the enemy has been after them and trying to take them out um, since the very beginning. Um, the reason why Satan hates the Jewish people is because what the Lord is going to do through them in the last days. It is so exciting. I encourage you, pray for Jerusalem. Pray for the Jews. Pray for the love of God to come on us to provoke them to jealousy. One of the main reasons why uh, Satan hates them is because starting with Moses and the tabernacle of Moses, the Jewish people were the ones that created a way for God's presence to come down here on, on earth. We love God's presence. But Moses went up on the mountain and he saw the, the, the pattern that was happening in heaven. He saw the throne room. He saw the temple of what was going on in heaven and he brought it down to earth that God's glory, that God's presence could come and be with his people. Same with David and his son Solomon in the, in the first actual temple. They made a way for God to, to come and dwell with his people. And that's so similarly what we're supposed to do. Jesus told us, pray thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven so knowing something about heaven is absolutely vital for us to have the mind of Christ to, to do this spiritual war thing um, we need to, to know a whole lot about heaven what's going on up there uh, how to get into the spirit I'm gonna read to you actually two whole chapters I'm not gonna skip any of it because it's so good uh, about heaven Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5 are you ready? This is Revelation chapter 4. After this, I looked, and there before me was a door standing open. Did you know that in the Hebrew calendar, this 2014 is called the year of the open door? There's an open door. After this, I looked, and before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one was seated upon the throne. When you go through that door that the Lord's opened before you, you will be in the Spirit immediately. And beloved, you are called to live and stay in the spirit it is possible go through that door go through that door and stay there immediately John was in the spirit and he who was on the throne was like a jasper stone and like Sardis in appearance and there was a rainbow around the throne like emerald around the throne were 24 other thrones and upon those thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white garments and golden crowns on their head out from the throne came flashes of lightning and sounds of thunder, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. Each one were the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was something like a sea of glass, like crystal, and in the center and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. The first of the creature, the first of the living creatures was like a lion and the second was like a calf and the third was like uh, had the face of a man and the fourth was like a flying eagle and the four living creatures one of them all of them having six wings are full of eyes around them and within and within can you imagine that can you picture it six wings filled with eyes around them and within and it says they never stop day and night saying holy 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 is the Lord the God the Almighty who was and is and is to come 
And when the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, to him who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and they worship him who lives forever and ever and they cast their crowns before the throne saying, You, O Lord, are worthy to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and for your pleasure they are and were created. Can you see this with me? I want you to get this on your heart. I want you to live here. I want you to be able to walk through heaven like you walk through your kitchen. That's how the Lord wants us to, wants to write this on our hearts. He wants to touch our eyes that we would have a lens of the throne room so that everything we see, everything we say, every experience is filtered through the lens of the throne room. Can you imagine, beloved, the things that are small here that aren't so small up there, the things that are big here that aren't so big up there, but when you look through this lens, things look different storing up treasures in heaven can you imagine crowns the elders get to throw crowns down before him and then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals and I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals and no one in heaven or on earth or under earth was able to open the book or look into it. So I began weeping loudly because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or break its seals. And one of the elders said to me, Stop weeping! Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has overcome so as to open the book and break its seals. And I saw in the midst of, a, of the throne and of the four living creatures and the elders a lamb, which was if it were slain. Can you see? Can you hear the voice of the Baptist? Behold the lamb who takes away the sins of the world. Behold, in the middle of the throne I saw a lamb. And it had seven horns and seven eyes, which were the seven spirits of God sent into the whole earth. He stepped forward and took the scroll from the right hand of the one sitting on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders threw themselves down before the lamb. Each one had a harp and a bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. That's your prayers that they're holding when you worship God through the lens of, 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 of the throne room. Your prayers and your cries are going up and joining the prayers and the cries of all all the saints and all that's happening in heaven going up before God even now, even now. And they sang a new song saying, Worthy are you to take the book and break its seals, for you were slain and purchased for God with your blood men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And you have appointed them as a kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will reign on earth. And then I looked and I heard the voices of many angels numbering 10,000 times 10,000 and millions around the throne and the living creatures and the elders saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And every created thing which is in heaven and on earth and under earth and on the sea and all things in them I heard them say to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and power dominion forever and ever and the four living creatures were saying amen and the elders threw themselves to the ground and they worshiped and I watched the lamb open the first of the seven seals and I heard a voice like thunder saying, come. Do you feel the invitation of heaven beckoning, beckoning you that in this time you have to come up here. You have to live up here every day, all the time, go through that door and come up here. You know, um, we hear about the, the love of God and his everlasting love and we know that his love is 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 just beyond anything that we can even fathom 
But I'm talking today about the beauty realm of the Lamb. And the Lord is beckoning us to be in awe and wonder and in marvel of how beautiful is the Lamb who was slain for you and me. Um, about a year ago or two, a year ago, I went to IHOP, the International House of Prayer. And um, I remember worshiping with all these beautiful worshipers. And they start singing this song. I've never seen him look like this before. I've never seen him look like this before. He radiates beauty. He radiates glory. I've never seen him look like this before. I've never seen him look like this before. He radiates beauty. And you know, in the past year, year and a half, there's this ebb and flow, up and down thing called life and relationship. And like these elders and angels and all the worshipers, I, found my, I find myself over and over again on my face before the one who sits on the throne and the Lamb. And when he enables me to get back up just a little bit to catch a glimpse, <laughs> to see that Lamb, to see that he's even more beautiful than the last time I caught a glimpse. And as his love is everlasting, so is his beauty. This lamb is so beautiful. God is so beautiful. He's so beautiful. He's so beautiful. And I marvel, my heart marvels every day to just catch a glimpse. I believe that's why those living creatures have all of those eyes. Because every time they fall down, they get back up just for another glimpse of his beauty. And boom, they fall back down again. Can you imagine what heaven is going to be like? <laughs> Bless you.